Mu Yorong's remark was made nonchalantly, yet it stirred up a clamor in the crowd. She was right. How could a hospital possibly cause a switched at birth incident? Perhaps, someone switched the babies at birth on purpose. Yi Zhu's biological mother was a mistress with despicable means. Therefore, she was capable of even nastier actions. If an outsider were in her place, the person would certainly be shocked by Mu Yorong's remark. However, the person standing before Mu Yorong was Yi Zhu, after all. She was a mogul who used to stand at the peak of the world at one point. Yi Zhu lowered her gaze ever so slightly and looked at Mu Yorong casually. Then, she responded in an indifferent tone, since what Ms. Mu said is so plausible, I believe that there's certainly adequate evidence to prove that this incident is deliberate, right? The laws in this country are fair and righteous. The lawbreakers can't outrun the long arm of the law, so I shall respectfully wait for Ms. Mu to file a lawsuit against me with evidence. Mu Yorong narrowed her eyes. She felt panicked in her heart for no apparent reason as she looked at Yishua standing before her. This person was obviously Yishua, so why did she feel threatened? Could it be that she was not a worthy match for a deadbeat? So, she calmed herself with great effort and then said, It has already been eighteen years since the incident. Even if there is evidence, it would have been swept under the rug by time. You're just shoving false arguments down my throat. Yishua smiled. Without evidence, to put it nicely, you are basically speculating, in less pleasant words, you are making a false accusation. On a more serious note, there's an offense known as defamation in our country too. The strange feeling from before just grew more intense. Mu Yurong could not allow herself to argue with Yishua anymore because only the weaker side could gain the crowd's attention and sympathy. She had to do something to capture everyone's attention once again. Hence, Mu Yorong's eyes welled up with tears and she said with a sobbing voice, You took my place in the family to live a good life for eighteen years while I lived in a dark, damp basement with that despicable mother of yours. I lived a life not knowing if I'll get my next meal. Yi Zhua, who do you think you are to stand here and criticize me? Upon hearing that, Mrs. Mu's hands were trembling as she held Mu Yorong's hands. They lived in a grand mansion over the years while her biological daughter was trapped in a basement. Was a basement appropriate for human beings to live in? She wished that she could choke Yishua to death right away. Furthermore, the rest of the people looked at Mu Yorong sympathetically as well. Yishua raised her gaze ever so slightly. Both you and I are victims. I'm not criticizing you, but I'm only speaking the truth. Moreover, I said that I'm leaving this place at once and that my surname will be Yi from now on. I don't have any connection to the Mu family anymore, and there's no need for you to hang on to this matter either. Mu Yurong replied with reddened eyes, How am I hanging on to this matter, Ha! Huh? Why do you have to be so provocative then? I'm only finding the incident to be a little suspicious. I know that you're unwilling to part with my family. You were acting like my parents' daughter for so many years, after all. I will treat you like my real sister from now on. Oh God! Brother Fifth! Your fiancé is too kind. She still wants to forgive the fake daughter after all this. Li Chen Dong was moved beyond words, for he had never met a person as kind as Mu Yorong. Upon hearing that, the people in the crowd praised Mu Yorong for being too kind. Yi Zhu smiled. Thank you for your good intention, but this is not my home. Mu Yorong was stunned. What was going on with Yishua? She had made her earlier remark to keep Yishua, yet she still insisted on leaving. Mu Daibing immediately waved his hand and summoned someone to bring over a document. Since you've already made up your mind to leave, sign the severance agreement then. In China, even an adopted daughter had the right to inheritance. Since Yishua had already decided to cut ties with the Mu family, Mu Daibing did not want to leave his inheritance to an outsider with no blood relations a century later. Yishua actually signed the severance agreement without the slightest hesitation. The severance agreement was then separated into two copies. Yishua kept one of the copies and then said to Mu Daibing and Shen Rong, Uncle, Auntie, goodbye. Since the severance agreement was signed, there was no need for her to address them as dad and mom anymore. If she were to address them that way, the others would certainly suspect her of scheming something. 
Upon saying that, Yishua got down on her knees and knelt on the floor right away. She gave a kowtow solemnly toward Mu Daibing and Shin Rong. Thank you for your love and tender care over the years, uncle, auntie. One should not be ungrateful for others' favor. The Mu family raised the original owner of Yishua's body until she was of age, so Yishua gave her respect on behalf of the original owner. No, I can't allow Yishua to leave just like that. Mu Yurong still wanted to use Yishua for her schemes. If Yishua were to leave, who is going to marry the scumbag? Maliciousness flashed past Mu Yurong's face, but it was replaced with a change of countenance soon. Yishua, I'm sincerely asking you to stay. It's always easy for the frugal to become extravagant but very difficult for the opposite to happen. I'm worried that you will not be used to living in a basement. Stay, and we can be filial children to dad and mom. Mu Yorong's remark was made exceedingly craftily. On the one hand, she criticized Yishua for being a merciless, ungrateful child for leaving without even repaying the parents for their love and tender care. On the other hand, she was making a grand display of her magnanimous character before the crowd. Upon hearing that, the people in the crowd immediately looked toward Yishua with different expressions. She was right. Yishua was ungrateful, right? She had yet to repay her parents' kindness, yet she wanted to evade the problem by walking away from it. Upon hearing that, Yishua looked back ever so slightly and said in a nonchalant tone, Ms. Mu, if I'm not mistaken, my mother has also raised you for eighteen years, so why haven't you stayed with her and repaid her kindness then? Mu Yurong was stunned for a moment. Yishua did not give Mu Yurong the chance to refute. Instead, she took her sweet time to get up from the ground. Her chin was tilted ever so slightly while the lighting cast a layer of snow glow on her face. Do not do unto others what you don't wish on yourself. Mu Yurong simply could not believe that the person before her eyes was Yishua. What the heck was going on? Since when did the deadbeat become so well versed? Could it be that this was a butterfly effect resulting from her rebirth? Yishua retracted her gaze ever so slightly in preparation to leave. At the very moment she did so, her vision landed on a pair of deep eyes. The man narrowed his eyes ever so slightly, and an overbearingness was emanating from behind his gaze. Nevertheless, her expression remained indifferent. She was totally unconcerned. The man was dressed in a classic Chinese robe buttoned meticulously all the way to the top with the same colored retro fastening. His well-chiseled lower jaw was as perfect as a statue's, while his complexion was fair and radiating coldness. He had a tall, straight nose and his entire body emitted an aura of abstinence. He also carried the posture of someone looking down at the world arrogantly. Yishua was skilled in reading people, so she was naturally aware that this man was not some common influential official. She knew very well that this man was not someone to be messed with either. She did not want to be targeted by a man of this nature. In just a moment, Yishua shifted her gaze without leaving a trace. She turned around and left. The man looked in the direction where Yishua vanished without any expression on his face. Then, his long, slim finger tapped on the surface of the table randomly. What are you looking at, Brother Fifth? Li Qian Dong followed the man's gaze out of curiosity. In the darkness, Yishua's silhouette could no longer be seen. Nothing. The man stood up and put out the cigarette that he had yet to finish in the ashtray. Let's go back as well. Brother Fifth, aren't you going to meet your fiancé? When he looked up again, the man's tall and slim silhouette had already made its way to the doorway. Li Qian Dong hastily jogged to catch up to him. Wait for me, Brother Fifth. Mu Yorong looked in the direction where Yishua disappeared. Her eyes were filled with a malicious glow. In this timeline, she was the prettiest girl in school. She was also finally the daughter of the Mu family. Yishua was merely a lowly pauper, who was she to compete with Mu Yorong? Even though Yishua had left the Mu family, she could not escape her destiny of being Mu Yorong's stepping stone in the future. After experiencing her rebirth, Mu Yurong became highly skilled in acting. Moments ago, she appeared as if she could not bear to part with Yishua. The sight of it made Shin Rong's heart wrench in pain. The child was so good in every way, but perhaps her weakness was that she was too kind. 
Yishua took everything that belonged to her, yet she could not bear to part with the good-for-nothing girl. In addition, she proposed to keep Yishua as her own sister. My good child, I know that you're kind-hearted, and you can't bear to let her leave. However, a person like her is truly unworthy of your kindness. Yishua is an immature, ungrateful scum. Upon saying that, Shinrong added, Oh right, you're wrong, about your adoptive mother, has she treated you well over the years? I almost dropped out of high school when I was in my freshman year because my adoptive mother refused to pay my school fees. In the end, the headmaster made an exception to waive the tuition fee, and I was accepted because of my outstanding achievements. When I was in elementary school, everyone referred to me as a bastard child that no one wanted. Mu Yorong sobbed upon remarking. In truth, her adoptive mother treated Mu Yorong well to the point where she never had to endure any hardship since she was young. Her adoptive mother doted on her lovingly. Even after learning that Mu Yorong was not her biological daughter, she was still worried that Mu Yorong would be bullied upon rejoining the Mu family and that she would be looked down upon. As a result, she gave all her life savings to Mu Yorong so that she could use it to hold her ground. The reason behind Mu Yorong's courage to lie vicariously was because no one here knew the truth. After all, only evilness could set off kindness in this world. Only green leaves could contrast red flowers. Those lowly people live for the sole purpose of making her stand out. Before Mu Yorong's voice died away, the people in the surrounding crowd assumed furious expressions. According to Mu Yorong's statement, it was not difficult to analyze and come to the conclusion that the switched at birth incident was her adoptive mother's own doing. It was the perfect reenactment of the civet cat exchanged for Crown Prince Opera. Otherwise, how could Mu Yorong's adoptive mother possibly stop her from attending school? Her adoptive mother was obviously trying to turn Mu Yorong into an uncultured deadbeat. What a disgusting woman! Shin Rong bawled while hugging Mu Yorong. My poor child, how could she treat you that way? That's truly vicious. Mu Yorong patted Shin Rong's shoulder and spoke in a sorrowful tone, it's fine. I've gotten used to it over the years. I'm not her biological child after all. You've had a rough time, my child, Shin Rong held Mu Yorong with a guilty yet sympathetic expression. From an angle where the crowd could not see, Mu Yorong's lips curled into a proud smile. Her goal had been achieved. Everything she wanted in this life was within her grasp now. Furthermore, she was certain that the mysterious financial magnate was peeking at her secretly from a dark corner. Using the original owner's memories, Yi Shua found the address where the original owner's mother, Yi Shu, lived. Yi Shu rented the cheapest basement in Yunjing province. The place was a chaotic mess, and it was so dark that one could not tell if it was day or night in there. To make matters worse, a gush of musty stench filled the air. It was dinner time, coincidentally. The elderly and young children of every house there were having dinner standing at the doorway. The crowd watched Yishua curiously upon her arrival. It was clearly a slum, so why would someone like Yishua be here? Yishua's body's original owner had thick makeup on her face, and her entire body emanated a gloomy, intolerant aura that concealed the brilliance of herself. On the other hand, Yishua was different. She was a tech mogul that everyone feared. Even if the leader of another world were to encounter her, the person would show respect to her. At this moment, she still possessed the aura of a superior being that others could not replicate despite the thick makeup she had on her. Yishua knocked on the tightly shut door under the close gaze of the crowd. Thud thud thud. After a long while, the door was open from the inside. Yishua met a sickly middle-aged woman with a ghastly pale face. She looked just like a modernized version of Lam Mui Mui that one could not help but love upon seeing. R. Are you Zhu Zhua? Yi Shu looked at Yi Zhua in astonishment. She was dumbfounded for a long while, and her eyes were filled with disbelief. Yi Zhua looked at Yi Shu. Mom, I'm home. What, what did you call me? Yi Shu's eyes warmed with tears. It was just yesterday that Yi Shu went over to see Yi Zhua. However, Yi Zhua refused to acknowledge her. On the contrary, Yi Shua humiliated her ferociously and said that she did not have such an embarrassing mother. 
Yi Shu was hurt beyond comparison, yet there was nothing she could do. Yi Shu refused to acknowledge her while the Mu family consented to continue raising her willingly. As a result, Yi Shu could only abandon her daughter. Obviously, Yi Shu did not expect that Yi Shu would actually come searching for her and address her as mom after just one day. She could not have been dreaming, right? Yi Shu had a story too. She was pregnant with twins at the age of just 19 back in those years because of love. However, although she was pregnant with twins, the nurse was notified that one of the babies was stillborn during the delivery. After her daughter was born, her lover, who used to be on intimate terms with her in the past, vanished without a trace. He was gone for 18 full years just like that. After reporting the case to the police, she learned the truth. Everything about her lover was fake. Whether it was his family address or name. He was a con man. He was a love rat with a sweet tongue. One should know that it was an embarrassment to the family for a 19-year-old maiden to have a child out of wedlock back in that era. As a result, Yi Shu's parents wanted to abandon the child after Yi Shu gave birth to her daughter and even found her adoptive parents. However, Yi Shu could not bear to part with her young daughter, so she moved out of the home with her daughter despite her parents' objections. Over the years, Yi Shu worked odd jobs while she raised her daughter. A single mother's life was not easy but she never gave up on her daughter and chose not to remarry. Yi Shu looked at Yi Shu and hugged her gently. I'm sorry, mom. I was naive in the past. Please forgive me, I promise that I will stay by you from now on. It's fine. I am fine now that you're home. Yi Shu broke into tears of joy as she welcomed Yi Shu into the house. Come in, quick, Zhu Zhu. The house is shabby, I hope you don't mind. As compared to the Mu family's house, the Yi family's dim basement was more than shabby. It was simply slightly less than a slum. The living room was about 10 square meters in size with its white wallpaper aged yellow, and the concrete floor cracked into fine rifts because it was not tiled. Humidity was seeping off the ground indistinctly. Additionally, a three-legged table was placed at the side of the living room, and a broken club was used to prop up the side where the other leg used to be. On the television cabinet that was old beyond recognition placed sat a black and white television. It was placed in front of the table. Yi Zhu had never expected to see an old antique like this in this thriving era. Nevertheless, on the positive side, the living room was kept in good order, and there was no strange stench in the air. She could tell at once that Yi Shu was a neat person. Zhua. Zhua Zhua, have a drink. Yi Shu fetched her a glass of water. Thank you, Mom. Yi Shu received the glass in her hands and took a sip of the water. Yi Shu observed Yi Shu's action of drinking the water. Yi Shu's hooded, upturned eyes, which looked exactly like Yi Shu's, were filled with shock. Yi Shu had truly changed. Yi Shu came here a few days ago, and Yi Shu fetched Yi Shu a glass of water just like today. How did Yi Shu react at the time? She had covered her nose and said disdainfully, I use Evian water to wash my face, and you're actually serving me this kind of water to drink. Are you trying to poison me? At the time, Yi Shu did not know what Evian meant yet. Afterward, she learned that Evian was a very costly type of mineral water. Yet today, somehow, there was not a single ounce of disdain in Yi Shu's eyes. Albeit being somewhat relieved, Yi Shu was still a little reserved with Yi Shua. Shui Shua, it's almost time for dinner. What would you like to have? I'll cook for you. Yi Shua placed down the glass and considered her answer in all apparent seriousness for a moment. Mom, is there a shower in the house? I'd like to take a shower first. She had thick makeup on her face and a strong alcohol stench on her body. Yi Shua just wanted to have a nice, warm shower to look and feel more like a normal person. Upon hearing that, Yi Shu immediately nodded. Yes. Yes. Follow me, Zhu Zhu. The bathroom was at the innermost part of the house. It was pathetically tiny and could only fit one person. If another person were to attempt to come in, both people would not be able to turn at all. Yi Shu looked at Yi Shu anxiously. She was afraid that Yi Shu would be displeased again. 
After all, Yizhui used to live a life of luxury. Observing the normal expression on Yizhui's face, Yishu continued to speak, take a shower first, Zhui Zhui. I shall look for some fresh clothes for you. Thank you for taking the trouble. Yizhui nodded. There were a few garments that Mu Yorong did not want anymore that were lying in the house. Those were brand new clothes that Yishu had bought from Mu Yorong, but Mu Yorong refused to wear them because of the poor quality. Nonetheless, Mu Yorong was shorter and a little chubbier than Yizhua. As a result, Mu Yorong's clothes would not fit Yizhua for sure. Therefore, Yishu went to a fashion store nearby and spent a hundred bucks to purchase two sets of new clothes. A set of clothes that cost fifty bucks was considered a cheap flea market bargain for an ordinary person. However, a set of clothes that cost fifty dollars was already considered a luxury good for Yishu. She would wear old clothes that people threw away on usual days and would need to save up for a long, long time in order to have one hundred bucks. Yishu took a quick shower and stood in front of the mirror to size up the girl she saw looking back at her. She had a very standard oval face, and her fine, delicate complexion was so fair that it was almost translucent. Her pair of exquisite hooded eyes were upturned ever so slightly while her crystal clear pupils were as mysterious as obsidian. Her lashes were very long and thick like a butterfly's wings. Furthermore, underneath her graceful, straight nose was her slightly pursed red lips. It seemed that her face was 30% nonchalant, 40% estranged, and 30% cold. Yet somehow, the combination exuded an elegant feeling. Yishua curled up her lips ever so slightly. The beauty in the mirror curled up her lips as well and cracked into a poppy flower-like radiant smile that could enchant an entire city. Her face was 50% similar to what it looked like in her past life, with each feature having its own merits. Seeing how beautiful the original owner was, the heavy weight on her chest was lifted at once. She was a person who judged people by their face, after all. Hmm, pretty good. Yishua picked up a rubber band and tied her long hair into a high bun, revealing her snowy white long neck that carried a tinge of evilness. Then, she whistled at herself in the mirror and asked, How am I so good looking? Yishua admired herself in the mirror for a while before she got dressed. She had just clothed herself when she furrowed her brows. Perhaps, she was accustomed to wearing branded clothing, so she was not used to the rough texture of the fabric material and felt uneasy all over her body. It seemed that she had to figure out a way to accumulate her first pot of gold as soon as possible so that she could lead her entire family to a fairly well-off life and make her way to the peak of humanity. Yishua raised an eyebrow and felt some memory fragments come into her mind. Then, she walked outside after she got changed. At that moment, Yishu walked out of the kitchen with a bowl of noodles in her hands. Zhui Zhui, come and have. She was stunned when she turned around and found that the rest of her words were stuck in her throat. The girl before her eyes was dressed in a white shirt where its hem was casually tied at her hips. She looked rather carefree as she carried a look of 30% plainness and 70% unruliness. Her legs were long and straight, there was no makeup on her face, yet she was so exquisite that it was impossible to take one's eyes off her. Even her standard hooded, upturned eyes were rippling with radiance. The clothes were obviously cheap flea market bargains, yet it looked like superior quality, branded clothes on her body. Even the professional models on television looked inferior to her. Mom. Yishu had only reacted to the situation after Yishu spoke. Was? Was this Yishua? Yishu was dumbstruck in bewilderment. She had never expected that Yishua would look so pretty with her thick makeup removed. It would not be an exaggeration to describe her with the words akin to a fairy. It's time for dinner, Shui Shua. I made you some noodles. Yishu suppressed the shock in her heart and placed the noodles on the table. Thanks, Mom. Yishua picked up the bowl and began devouring the noodles frantically. She had not eaten much throughout the day, so she was truly starving by now. Although she was eating rather quickly, she did not appear crude. On the contrary, it was a pleasant sight to behold. Pretty soon, she had finished the bowl of noodles. There's more in the pot. I shall bring you another bowl, said Yishu. Yishua smiled. 
I'm full, mom. Yishu continued to speak, then I shall take you to your room so you can rest. Sure. Yishu nodded. The bedroom was a room separated by drywall. It was a very narrow space, and Yishu stayed in the next room. The furnishing inside was very simple, there was a bed, a desk, and a cupboard for clothes. Not a single item there was excessive. Mu Yurong lived here in the past. She had already removed all the items she wanted before she left. As a result, not even a bed sheet could be found on the bed now. Yishu said, embarrassed, I shall get you a bed sheet and a blanket. Yishu simply replied smilingly, all right. Upon saying that, Yishu continued to speak, oh right, mom. Where's my uncle? Yishu had a total of five siblings. Her youngest brother, Yisen, lived with her. The uncle Yishua was referring to as Yisen. Yisen was a middle school graduate. Due to his poor educational background, he did not manage to hold a proper job over the years. He worked as a package delivery man on usual days and did not smoke or drink, his only vice was gambling. He would invest almost all of his monthly wage in the casino. Yishu looked up at the clock on the wall and said, he should be back soon. Right then, the sound of footsteps was heard from the outside. Sister! Sister! Come outside, quick! Come and look at what I've brought you! Coming! Yishu answered and walked toward the living room. The person who came back was none other than the senator he carried half a barbecued duck in his left hand and a large watermelon in his right hand. You've made a fortune, huh? Yishu said in astonishment. Even though it was already the 21st century now, meat was a rare and extremely luxurious commodity in the Yi family. They would only chance upon a piece of meat during festivities. Yisen cracked into a smile, revealing his pearly whites. It's a gift from my customer who owns a barbecued duck store. He said that our package delivery men are working very hard under the hot weather. Before his voice died away, Yisen noticed Yishua, who emerged from behind. He said with an astonished expression, Sister, who's this? Yishu smiled and introduced her to Yi Senior. This is Zhu Zhua. Zhu Zhua, meet your uncle. Hello, uncle. Yishua greeted him respectfully with a bow. Yisen looked as if he had seen a ghost. You, you, you. You're Mu Zhua. Yishua was obviously not like this a few days ago. Uncle, I'm known as Yishua now. Yishua enunciated her words clearly. You're not going to be scheming something again, right? Yisen pulled Yishu behind him and said vigilantly, Sister, don't be deceived by this ungrateful brat again. The words made Yishua suddenly recall many unpleasant memories. The original owner of her body did many things that hurt Yishu in order to cut ties with her. Therefore, Yishua looked at Yisen and said sincerely, Uncle, I made a mistake in the past. I did many things that hurt my mom, and I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. Yisen looked at Yishua with a puzzled expression, and his gaze was filled with speculation. How did Yishua suddenly turn into this person? It was so absurd that the sun must have risen in the west. In an instant, he warned, Ungrateful brat, if you have the courage to play some tricks and bully my sister, I won't let you off easily. Yishu laughed and mediated the situation. Yisen, Shuizhua is my daughter, so how can she bully me? Yisen grunted coldly. That's not for certain. What if she is as heartless as the ungrateful brat Mu Yorong, ha? Huh? Upon hearing that, Yishua raised an eyebrow ever so slightly. From the remark, it was not difficult to tell that Yisen had a strong opinion of Mu Yorong. It seemed that there were still some hidden stories she had yet to unravel. Yishu spoke up, let's stop talking about whether she is ungrateful. I can guarantee that Zhu Zhu is definitely not that kind of person. Oh right, you must be hungry after delivering packages until so late. There are noodles in the pot. You can get yourself a bowl while I prepare the bed for Zhu Zhu. I shall go with you, mom, Yi Zhu uttered. All right. Then, the mother and daughter went to the room and took out the bed sheet to prepare the bed. It would be fine to leave the bed sheet spread out on the bed in the summer under normal circumstances. However, they were in a basement. 
the basement was extremely dim and cold all year round, regardless of the weather or season on the outside. Yi Shu was still very unfamiliar with her daughter, Yi Zhua. As a result, she was slightly reserved in her behavior and speech. She was even feeling at a loss for words when making the bed, so the atmosphere became a little awkward. Yi Zhua sensed Yi Shu's cautiousness, so, she smiled and searched for mutual topics of conversation. She was not the original owner of her current body, so she was certain that she would not disappoint Yi Shu. In fact, Yi Zhua was an orphan in her past life. Therefore, she would certainly protect the motherly love she now had that did not come easy to her before. After the bed was prepared, Yi Shu wanted to serve Yi Zhua some cut watermelon. However, Yi Sen stopped her. It was obvious that he was displeased. Sister, she is the eldest daughter from a wealthy family, and she even uses Evian mineral water to wash her face. Why would she eat the watermelon in our slum? Don't you get snubbed despite your good intentions? Yi Sen was present when the Evian mineral water incident took place. He wanted to beat Yi Zhu up at the time and only held back because Yi Shu stopped him. The girl had truly gone too far. Yi Shu furrowed her brows ever so slightly and said softly, The child has already admitted her mistake. As her uncle, why do you still want to fuss over this matter? A human's mind is unpredictable. Sister, the child you raised all by yourself turned out to be an ungrateful brat, what more of this child who was raised by someone else? I'm just afraid that you'll be hurt. Even though Yi Sen was a rather foolish person, he was genuinely very concerned about his elder sister, Yi Shu. He was afraid that she would be hurt once again. Don't worry, it won't happen. Yi Shu said with a determined expression. I can tell from the child's gaze that she has changed for the better. Yi Sen heaved a helpless sigh, but he did not attempt to stop Yi Shu anymore. Sister, you refuse to give up until all hope is gone. Yi Shu smiled and carried the watermelon while she walked to Yi Zhu's room, not forgetting to turn around and remind Yi Sen, rest early after you're done eating. You lose nine out of ten times at gambling. You're not allowed to gamble. Yi Sen nodded in response. Then, Yi Shu arrived at Yi Zhu's room with the watermelon. Have some watermelon, Zhu Zhu. Thanks, Mom. Yi Zhu used a toothpick to pick up a chunk of watermelon. She gave it a taste and found that it was very sweet because it was the middle part of the watermelon's flesh. Have some too, Mom. Yi Zhu passed a chunk of watermelon to Yi Shu. Yi Shu answered smilingly, I don't like watermelon, you can have it. Just like all the mothers in the world, Yi Shu wanted to leave the best of everything to her child. This made Yi Zhu suddenly feel sad. She put down the watermelon and hugged Yishu. Don't worry, Mom. I will certainly give you and Uncle a good life. The night grew darker, and it was already midnight in the blink of an eye. The basement was all quiet by then. A silhouette walked toward the outside of the basement cautiously and then shut the door without any difficulty. Yisen exhaled a breath of relief as if a weight was lifted off his chest. He felt relieved that no one noticed him. Meanwhile, someone tapped on Yi Sen's shoulder. F asterisk CK. It's a ghost. Yi Sen was so startled that he leaped up akin to a frightened bird. His face turned pale at once. Hush. Yi Zhu put a finger on her lips and made a hushing action. Speak softer, uncle. If my mom notices us, we won't be able to go out anymore. Yi Sen was relieved to see that it was Yi Zhua. Go away. Scram! A pauper like me doesn't deserve to be the uncle of a rich kid like you. Yi Zhuo was not infuriated by his statement, instead, she followed Yi Sen just like that. She was calm and composed as if she was casually shopping. Yi Sen turned around and said furiously, You must be sick, right? Mu Zhuo! Why are you following me? Yi Zhuo smiled. Uncle, my surname is Yi, and my name is Yi Zhuo. Also, this road is not owned by you. If you can walk on it, and I can too. Yi Sen was rendered speechless for a moment. He continued to walk ahead while cursing away. It did not take long before they arrived at a brightly lit location. It was the largest underground gambling house in Yunjing province. 
before Eason entered the place, he clasped his hands together and prayed devoutly, Bless and protect me, Bodhisattva. Bless and protect me, Bodhisattva. You must make sure that I have good luck today. I will burn Josh sticks for you and make a generous donation to you if I win a lot of money. The gambling house reeked of smoke, and all sorts of people were there. The ones who won money were highly conceited, the ones who lost money were sighing sorrowfully. Yeeson was a regular at the gambling house. Someone greeted him as soon as he entered the place. Brotherson is here. Hello, Brotherson. Who's this, Brotherson? Is she your relative? Yeeson had only just realized then that Yishua followed him all the way into the gambling house. He retreated a few steps at once and maintained a distance from Yishua. I'm not acquainted with her. I'm not related to her at all. Yishua was not upset by his action. Instead, she followed Yisen until they arrived at the innermost gambling table. A group of people was shouting so hard that their faces were flushed scarlet. Big! 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 It's going to be big! The dealer opened up the chest that contained dice and said while smiling, Three, one, five. Small. F asterisk CK. How could it be small, ha? Huh? That's some F asterisk cat up luck, really. The dealer shook the dice once again, and the scoring chart appeared in front of the table. The players could choose where to place their bets. The more types of wagers were hit, the more money a player would win. Yishua's ears moved ever so slightly to focus her attention to listen to the sound of dice colliding inside the chest. Meanwhile, Yisun chose to wager on small with careful consideration and then clasped his hands together to pray for God's blessing. Wager on big, uncle. Wager on five, six, and one, Yishua said softly. Yisun rolled his eyes at her. His gaze was filled with contempt. Who does she think she is, huh? Look at her being all confident and steady. Does she really think that she is a gambling queen? What a joke! When the crowd was done wagering the bets, the dealer opened up the chest and announced the answer, five, six, one, and big. Yisun took a glance at Yishua out of curiosity. He did not expect Yishua's wild guess to be correct. It seemed she was lucky. Yisun calmed his state of mind, then, he continued to wager his bet. At that moment, Yishua continued to say, you've placed the wrong bet again, uncle. The answer is big and the numbers to go for are six, six, one. Yeeson was dumbstruck in bewilderment when the dealer announced the result. It was exactly the same as Yishua's claim. Her, her wild guess was correct again? Yeeson swallowed a gulp of saliva with great difficulty. In the third round of bets, Yeeson chose small just the same. He refused to be misled. He was an experienced man, so he refused to believe that he would lose to a little girl. Yishua smiled and said, it's still going to be big. Six, four, one. No, it could not be. How could Yishua possibly make the correct guess every single time? How could it possibly be big every single time? Yishua stared at the dealer's hand pinned on the dice's chest with a piercing gleam in his eyes. It would be small for sure. It had to be. He could not allow himself to lose to the little brat, Yishua. He wanted to win the next round so badly. When the chest was revealed, Yi Sen's face, which was initially a little pale, had turned ghastly. Yi Shua made the correct guess yet again. Even though Yi Shua made three correct guesses in a row, Yi Sen still refused to believe her. In an instant, he had only 300 bucks remaining from the wage he had just received today. He would be doomed if he were to lose again. Since the first few rounds were all big, he was certain that this round would be big again. He would not choose small anymore. As expected, he chose big. Just as he was about to wager his bet, Yishua's voice was heard in the air once again. Uncle, it's not going to be big this time. Choose small, then place your bet on three, one, four. Was it going to be small this time after ten consecutive rounds of big? Could the ungrateful little brat be pulling his leg this time? This was the last remaining 300 bucks he had on him. It has been big for 10 consecutive rounds. It's surely going to be big this round. 
the rest of the people around him chose big too. Choose big, Brotherson. It's surely going to be big. Look at yourself, how many times have you lost? Follow me this time, and you won't be mistaken for sure. Right, choose big. It's going to be big. Meanwhile, the banknote in Yisen's hand was gently tugged away by someone. A faint voice was heard in the air saying, let's choose small and place bets on three, one, and four. Are you doing this on purpose? Who permitted you to choose small, ha? Huh? Yisen looked toward Yishua in a rage. Nevertheless, Yishua's expression remained the same. She did not answer nor attempt to explain. Someone on the side immediately rubbed it in. Old ye, old ye. You're going to lose so bad that you won't even have pants to cover your legs. That bet is not counted. It wasn't me who made the choice. I wanted to choose big. The dealer pinned down Yisen's hand. Remove your hand after you place your bet, player. Don't break the rules here. Yisen pulled back his hand unwillingly and glared at Yishua ferociously. You're dead, little rascal. Meanwhile, the dealer opened the chest, and the dice on the gaming table were revealed to everyone. Three, one, four. Small. Upon hearing that, Yi Sen's frozen expression turned lively in an instant. F asterisk CK. F asterisk CK me. It's small for real? He could not have misheard it, right? We've won, uncle. Yishua spoke nonchalantly. He won. He had really won. F asterisk CK. It is actually small. The rest of the people were all sighing in the surroundings. I won. I won. Ha ha. Yisen grabbed Yishua's hand in excitement and asked, Which one should I choose next? This time, he truly believed in Yishua's capabilities. Yishua's lips curled into a faint smile as she said softly, small. Three, one, four. All right. After winning for a few consecutive rounds, Yisen smiled so widely that his eyes could not be seen. It had been a very long time since he won so triumphantly. It felt amazing. The scene was witnessed by the eyes of the slim, straight silhouette standing at the guardrail of the gambling house's second floor. He leaned forward ever so slightly, and his facial features exuded icy coldness under the dim, yellow lights. A hand with distinct joints was placed on the guardrail. The fingers attached to that hand were slim, long, and clean, and there was a string of prayer beads held in them. The blood-red prayer beads offset the fair fingers and made them look even fairer. It was a pair of hands so pleasant-looking that it could suffocate a man. Meanwhile, a young man stepped forward from the side and spoke while looking at a spot downstairs, F asterisk CK. This is impressive. It's simply a case of prophecy. He did not expect that a woman could actually be so skilled in gambling. Impressive. Can't you recognize her? The man suddenly looked back at him. You know her, Brother Fifth? Li Qian Dong observed the silhouette downstairs meticulously. As she was standing over there under the bright lights, it looked as if her porcelain white face was enshrouded with a layer of snowy glow. Her charming brilliance was tinted with clarity that was mixed with carefreeness. The noisy crowd around her turned into the background that helped her stand out. If one were to describe Mu Yorong as being pretty, the woman downstairs was as beautiful as Chang Yi, the goddess of the moon and the fairy in the clouds. She was exceedingly exquisite, charming beyond comparison. Moreover, her body had also emitted the coldness of a dead winter. If Mu Yorong were to stand before her, perhaps she would not even be able to see her own shadow. There was no other person like her in the entire city of Beijing. Therefore, he did not expect such an exquisite woman in the tiny Yunjing province. Li Qiandong was truly shocked. She's Yizhua, said the man. Yizhua? Li Qiandong was stunned for a moment but then said, that fake daughter of the Mu family, Mu Zhua? The man nodded gently. F asterisk CK. Li Qiandong looked at the person downstairs in bewilderment. He almost thought that he had gone blind because he could not associate that person with the common-looking girl with thick makeup that he saw from the Mu family's banquet hall not long ago. 
When Li Qian Dong was slightly calmer, he narrowed his eyes and said, Brother Fifth, could, could it be that she is trying to get your attention on purpose? Otherwise, how could a young girl possibly be so skilled in gambling? Especially when Yishua was known to be a good-for-nothing fake daughter of a wealthy family. Li Qianlong's impression of Yishua was as unfavorable as it could get. It was only human for him to think in such a manner. Everything that happened tonight, starting from the incident with the Mu family, was all just a scheme. I wonder if anyone in Yunjing province is aware of Yishua's true character and abilities? It feels as if she is a changed person. Also, she happened to show up in the exact two places we went. Who would believe that she is not doing this on purpose so that she can play hard to get? Let's leave. The man turned around with an indifferent expression on his face and the string of prayer beads in his hand. Li Qiandong followed after him at once. The person walking in front of Li Qiandong was named Sun Xiaoqing. The Sun family's ancestral home was located in Yunjing province, and the family moved to Beijing from the Yunjing province 25 years ago. Twenty years ago, the Tsin family's patriarch, Tsin Haifeng, suddenly passed away from an illness. Tsin Xiaoqing, who was only 18 years old at the time, carried the family's burden all on his own. He relied on his unusual commercial competence to run the family business in Beijing. He had cultivated his influence and developed the Tsin family into the most powerful family in China. Even when the big shots with good reputations in Beijing were to encounter him, they would address him as fifth master Tsun out of respect. Today, Tsun Xiaoqing was less than 30 years old, yet he held a high status in society and stood at the pyramid's highest peak. Nonetheless, Tsun Xiaoqing was a solitary and eccentric man. He was not fond of beautiful women but instead enjoyed visiting temples all the time. The old Madame Sun was worried that Sun Xiaoqing would accidentally become spiritually enlightened and choose a monk's path. That was why she compelled him to move the entire family back to Yunjing province with the aid of a suicide threat so that he could fulfill his betrothal to the daughter of the Mu family. Sun Xiaoqing and Mu Yorong's engagement was set during his childhood. The Sun family had settled down in Beijing for some time, and it had already been many years since the two families were acquainted with each other. It was rather abruptly that the Tsin family returned to Yunjing province in a low-profile manner. Meanwhile, the gambling on the first floor still continued. My niece, which one should I wager my bet on? Yi Sen's address to Yi Zhu changed without him even realizing it. His niece was impressive. A truly capable person. That's all for tonight. We should go home. It was best not to overdo anything. If they were to continue to win rounds in this fashion, it would not be good for them to stay in the gambling house. Yi Sen's enthusiasm was piqued, so how could he willingly leave? Nevertheless, he hastily jogged to catch up to Yi Shua when he saw her turn around and leave. Wait for me, my niece. They had just walked out of the gambling house when a middle-aged rascal blocked Yi Shua's path with a few other gangsters. Hey, beauty! Our brother Leopard wishes to take you to supper. Yishua looked up at the man lazily and was prepared to exercise her muscles and joints when a silhouette charged wildly toward her and swung a kick at the leader. Then, the silhouette shielded Yishua protectively and placed his hands on his hips. How dare you bully my niece! I can see that you don't want to be in business anymore, right? The person who was kicked gritted his teeth in pain. He was about to curse when he fixed his eyes upon the silhouette and found that the man was Yi Senator, he hastily said. Brotherson, I thought you said that you were not acquainted with her when we were inside earlier, right? If I were to know that this person is your niece, I wouldn't have the audacity to do so. He had obviously said that he was not acquainted with her not long ago, yet their relationship turned into uncle and niece in the blink of an eye. Apparently, a man's mouth was not to be trusted. Yeeson still had his hands on his hips as he continued, cut the crap. This is my niece, Yijua. Apologize to my niece now. Quick, 